Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of NASCAR Underdogs, Dick Brooks. Dick Brooks is a former NASCAR Cup Series driver and owner that competed from 1969 through 1985. He drove for 23 different teams, including his own, throughout his NASCAR career. This is a video breaking down his career year by year. Dick Brooks NASCAR Grand National, now Cup Series, debut came in Daytona in the spring of 1969. He was behind the wheel of his own number 32 Plymouth. In 69, Brooks would make 28 out of 54 starts. His best start was 5th in the fall at Talladega, and his best finish was 3rd in the fall at Weaverville. Overall, in his inaugural season, he scored 3 top 5s and 12 top 10s, finishing 21st in final points. For the 1970 season, Brooks once again was behind the wheel of his own number 32 Plymouth. Except for two races, he drove a number 86 Dodge for Dennis Gallion. In that number 82, his best start was 21st, and his best finish was 30th, both at Riverside in the summer. As for his season in the number 32, his best start was 2nd in the fall at Richmond. His best finish was 2nd twice, in the spring at Darlington, and in the summer at Hickory. Overall, he made 34 out of 48 starts in 1970, scoring 15 top 5s and 18 top 10s, finishing 13th in final points. In 1971, Brooks made a move to start driving a number 22 Golden Products Dodge for Mario Rossi, part-time. They made it 15 starts, but at the conclusion of the 23rd race of the season at Michigan, they parted ways. In the number 22, Brooks, is that his best start was 2nd in the spring at Columbia, and his best finish was second in the spring at Darlington. Overall, he scored 9 top 5s and 12 top 10s in just 15 starts in that number 22. Now, near the end of the 1971 season, Brooks made 5 more starts, 1 in a number 95 Camaro, 3 in a number 66 for Ross Ferguson, and 1 more in a number 32 Plymouth that he owned. His best start was 5th, and his best finish was 20th, both coming at Macon, in his own number 32. R.J. Reynolds began sponsoring the NASCAR Cup Series in 1972, shortening the season's schedule from about 50 races a season down to about 30 races a season. Brooks' 1972 was all over the place. He started the season in the number 90, Trucks More Ford, and he ended up making four starts throughout the season before Junior Dunleavy. His best start was eighth in the spring at Michigan. And his best finish was eighth in the spring at Talladega. He made one start in the number 66 for Vernon Blank, starting 20th and finishing 35th in the spring at Darlington. Next, he made his first of five starts in a number 73 for Marvin Weltley. His best start was 11th twice in the spring at Riverside, and in the summer at Talladega. His best finish was 33rd in the spring at Riverside. Then he made two starts in a row, and a number 45 Mercury for Bill Seifert. His best start was 6th, and his best finish was 32nd, both coming in the fall at Darlington. Brooks then made one start in the number 15 Moore Engineering Ford for Bud Moore in the fall at Rockingham. He started 7th and finished 34th. Then he made his final start of the season in a number one Ford driving for Bill Champion at College Station, starting 21st and finishing 17th. Overall, he scored one top 10 in 14 starts altogether. The following season, in 1973, again, Brooks did not have a consistent ride throughout the season. He started the season in Daytona driving for Cotton Owens in a number six Dodge, starting 9th and finishing 3rd. Then he made his first of eight starts in the number 90 Trucksmore Industries Ford for Jenny Dunleavy. His best start for Jenny was 7th in the fall at North Wilkesboro. His best finish for Jenny was 5th in the spring at Rockingham. The next team he made two starts for was Crawford Racing in their number 22. His best start was 24th and his best finish was 1st in the summer at Talladega. This would end up being the only NASCAR Cup Series victory that Brooks would ever score. Next, he made one start in a number 61 Chevrolet for Don Birchwell at Darlington in the fall, starting 22nd and finishing 9th. 
he made his final two final two starts of the season in his own number 32. With his best start coming both in the fall at Rockingham, his best finish and his best start. His best start was tenth, and his best finish was seventh. Overall, in 14 starts, he scored one win, three top fives, and nine top tens. The 1974 season had Brooks only running a part-time schedule, but at least it was all for the same team. He made 16 starts behind the wheel of his own number 32, Simons Dodge. His best start was 5th in the fall at Rockingham, and his best finish was 7th in the summer at Bristol. Overall, he scored three top tens and finished 27th final points. In 1975, Brooks reconnected with the number 90 Trexmore Industries Ford team owned by Jimmy Dunleavy. They ran the majority of the season, making 25 out of 30 starts. His best start was third in the fall at North Wilkesboro. His best finish was second in the fall at Dover. Overall, he scored six top fives and 15 top tens, finishing 10th in final points. This was the first time he had ever finished inside the top 10 in final points. In 1976, Junie Dunleavy took a Ford Torino number 90 sponsored by Trucksmore Industries to the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Dick Brooks was one of a three-man team. The car ran for about half the time and finished 40th in class, making this the first time NASCAR ever brought an entry to the 24 Hours of Le Mans. For the 1976 NASCAR Cup Series season, Brooks returned to the number 90 Trucksmore Ford for Junior Dunleavy, except for two starts. He made one start in a number 95 for Junior Miller at Riverside in the, in the spring, starting 18th and finishing 33rd. Then at Nashville, Nashville Fairgrounds, he start, made one start in a number 64 Ford for Elmo Langley, starting 22nd and finishing 29th. In the number 90, his best start was third in the spring at Darlington, and his best finish was third in the summer at Talladega. Overall, he scored three top fives and 18 top tens, en route to 10th in final points. Now, in 1977, Dick Brooks returned once again to drive the number 90 Trucks Moore Ford for Johnny Dunleavy for all but three races that season. His best start was fourth in the fall at Richmond. His best finish was second in the spring at Bristol. Overall, in those 27 starts for Junior Dunleavy and the number 90 Ford, he scored 7 top 5s and 20 top 10s on his way to finishing 6th in final points. This would be his career best points finish. Now, that same season, he made two more starts for Elmo Langley's number 64, Sonny King Ford. His best start in that number 64 was 22nd in the spring at Nashville Fairgrounds. His best finish in the number 64 was 12th in the spring at Riverside. The next season, in 1978, Brooks once again returned to the number 90 Trucks Moore Ford owned by Jimmy Dunleavy for the vast majority of the season, making 27 starts. His best start was 4th in the spring at Darlington, and his best finish was 4th in the summer at Bristol. Overall, he scored 5 top 5s and 17 top 10s, finishing 8th in final points. Brooks made his other three starts to complete a 30-race season, driving the number 64 Sunny King Ford and Honda Ford, owned by Elmo Langley. His best start was 20th in the spring at Riverside, and his best finish was 14th in the spring at Nashville Fairgrounds. Dick Brooks made a big change in 1979 when he started driving the number 05 Bear Finder Oldsmobile in Chevrolet. Now, this was for Nelson Maylock. He made 27 starts in 79. His best start was 7th in the summer at Nashville Fairgrounds. His best finish was 3rd in the spring at Rockingham. Overall, he scored 1 top 5 and 8 top 10s in route to 22nd in final points. Once again, for the 1980 NASCAR Cup Series season, Brooks started this season behind the wheel of the number 7 Sanyo Chevrolet, owned by Nelson Mela. He made the first 16 starts of the season before parting ways with the team. His best start was 7th in the spring at Dover, and his best finish was 5th twice in the spring at Atlanta and Darlington. Then near the end of the season, he made three starts for Billy Matthews 
in the number 41 Chevrolet. His best start was 15th in the fall at Rockingham, and his best finish was 10th twice in the fall at Darlington and Charlotte. Overall, he scored two top fives and five top tens, and route to 27th the final points. Then in 1981, Brooks only made five NASCAR Cup Series starts. Three for the number 41 Buick team owned by Billy Matthews. His best start for them was sixth in the spring at Charlotte. His best finish ended up being 15th in the spring at Darlington. Then he also made two starts in the number 13 Carolina Tool Ford owned, owned by Bobby Hawkins. His best start was 23rd in the fall at Rockingham. And his best finish was 13th in the fall at Atlanta. The following season, in 1982, Brooks started the season driving for Bobby Hawkins in the number 13 Carolina Tool Ford. He made four starts before he and the team parted ways. All four starts ended in DNFs. His best start was 11th twice in the spring at Bristol and Atlanta. His best finish was 28th in the spring at Bristol. Then near the end of the 82 season, he made one start in a number 8 Sonny's Barbecue Pontiac owned by Steve Harrison starting 21st to finishing 24th in the fall Charlotte race. After spending four seasons apart, Dick Brooks and Junie Dunleavy teamed back up to run the full NASCAR Cup Series schedule in 1983. Brooks was behind the wheel of the number 90 Chameleon Sunglasses Ford. For the first time in his career, he led the NASCAR Cup Series point standings for one week early in the season. His best start was fifth in the summer at Talladega and his best finish was fifth twice in the spring at Daytona and Riverside. Overall, he scored two top fives and six top tens on his way to 14th in final points. For the 1984 season, Brooks returned to the number 90 Chameleon Sunglasses Ford owned by Junie Dunleavy. This would end up being his final full-time season in the NASCAR Cup Series. His best start was seventh twice in the spring at Richmond and Rockingham. And his best finish was third in the summer at Bristol. Overall, he scored one top five and five top tens, finishing 15th in final points. Now, 1985 will be the final season that Dick Brooks would ever make a NASCAR Cup Series start. That season, he made four starts, all in a number one, but for two different teams. He made three starts in a number one Ford for Petty Enterprises. His best start was 11th in the spring at Daytona, and his best finish was 20th in the spring at Rockingham. Then he made his final NASCAR Cup Series start in the 85 Coca-Cola 600, driving the number one Exxon Chevrolet for Hendrick Motorsports. He started 31st and finished 10th. Overall, Dick Brooks made 358 NASCAR Cup Series starts for 23 different teams. He scored one win, 57 top fives and 150 top tens, with his best points finish coming in 1977, sixth. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.